folks that were supportive, as I mentioned to you earlier on your show. But it got had, the talk going, and then impeachment came out again, though. I mean, we, you got the ball had, rolling. We got we got the ball rolling, and as you recall also, Alex, it had nothing to do with Monica Lewinsky. Now, what eventually wound up being the grounds for the impeachment of uh, William Jefferson Clinton were legitimate, that uh, perjury and obstruction of justice. Uh, but when I first filed the inquiry of impeachment in 1997, none of us uh, had heard of Monica Lewinsky uh, or Paula Jones or any of that. But uh, we were very concerned. I was very concerned. And the 17 other members of the House that signed on to that original inquiry of impeachment, including uh, rest his soul, uh, Sonny Bono and initially, uh, you know, we were concerned about real direct violations of the law, the selling of national security information to the communist Chinese, communist Chinese money coming directly into the White House, the subversion of our law campaign finance. Missile laws. secrets now, getting transferred. And for those that don't know, I want to bring this up. That's why you were such a hero there. You brought up stuff the Republican establishment didn't want because they were involved in it. And later the prosecutor, you know, obviously uh, on the next case connected into it because you, you're obviously indicted in the House, tried in the Senate. You were bringing up stuff that would bring down the whole corrupt system. They wanted it to be the sex case and the perjury case because it isolated it down directly to only them. I mean, I know that because you told me that at the time. It also came out in the news later. That, that, that is a correct recitation of history. Uh, many, many of the issues that I and, for example, Dan Burton, who was chair of the House Oversight Committee at, at the time, were trying to go into was to really get to the bottom of this uh, of this cronyism, particularly involving foreign money that was coming in. And the uh, the leadership uh, just uh, would have nothing to do with it uh, in large measure, in my view, because it hit a little bit too close to home. There were members of the Republican Party. Uh, that we're taking uh, money from some of these foreign sources as well. Sir, yeah. isn't this how countries finally do get taken over in outside soft espionage, that they just start taking money, nobody else wants to report on it because they're taking money, and pretty soon you're totally bought off. The Saudi Arabians and the Chinese communists tell you what movies to produce, tell you what Congress people you're going to have. I mean, aren't we pretty much already getting to that point where we've been taken over by multinationals and foreign countries? We're moving down that road very, very quickly, Alex. And to compound the problem, we have a president who is so arrogant, as you mentioned, unlike Nixon, who was uh, who was corrupt in his own way, but did it uh, behind the scenes. Uh, this president is, is so arrogant, he goes out there and says, I'm going to act extra constitutionally. Congress isn't doing something, so I'm going to. And the, the sort of the perfect storm here is that we have a citizenry that by and large is has become ignorant and unknowing about the proper constitutional standard and how our system operates. So you have a president that is supremely arrogant, you have a Congress that is somnambulant, and you have a citizenry that is largely ignorant of its responsibility as the citizenry to take action against a president. It's a very, very bad, very toxic combination we have here. And exactly, and, and now, I mean, like Hillary, and the State Department openly getting money from dictatorships to then bypass Congress and say, oh, you have a special letter, you can have these weapons, or we're taking these sanctions off, and then billions of dollars flow in. It's completely naked. She's worse than Al Capone. And then now if she doesn't get in trouble, what happens next? I mean, do you think Hillary can survive You know, new emails coming out that she did lie about, uh, just knowing her servers were hacked? I mean, it's just incredible. It is, unfortunately, when you look at the lay of the land politically, particularly with our electoral college system that, that we have, uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, whoever the nominee is going to be, and I think it's uh, very, very likely to be Hillary Clinton, unfortunately, uh, that uh, candidate starts out with a, with a huge electoral college advantage because of the way the states have lined up, for sure. example. California, New York, and so forth. Could this country survive a Hillary Clinton? I mean, I, I I really think she's such a psychopath that if she gets in control, it's, I mean, I don't know what she's going to do. She openly she, says well, she wants to go after our free speech. I mean, you name it. She's going to destroy America as we know it, Alex. No doubt about it. These people are just, they already run the country. Why do they want to fundamentally break it? Why do they want to make us like Venezuela? I just don't get it. It, it, they're in a different universe. It's very, very difficult to understand as American citizens who, who read as you have done, read our history, understand it, understand the Constitution. 
It makes no sense. But unfortunately, there are far more people out there who are ignorant of what you understand and I understand in the history of this country than there are that understand it. That's why it's so hard to fight this. But we have to. Absolutely. I want to go to some phone calls uh, here. We're about to go to break. Let's get one in right now. Uh, let's talk to Eric in West Virginia. You're on the air with former Congressman Bob Barr of Liberty Guard. Go ahead, Eric. Hi, Bob. Hi, Alex. Okay, so uh, this is just based on an observation. I wonder if you agree. Um, I've seen a lot of videos and seen a lot of stories of people that have, you know, exercised their Second Amendment right. For example, one place out in Washington, I think it was, where it was a, it was a national park, and they had just turned it into a gun-free zone and the people rose up and they showed up at about 300 at a town hall meeting, everybody fully armed, and they managed to get that law overturned overnight, literally. And then another case down in Texas recently where people were, you know, people are getting arrested for feeding the homeless, people show up fully armed. And I didn't sure, So you're anything. saying what about civil disobedience? Yes, civil disobedience. Do you think that it would be reasonable to actually exercise the Second Amendment peacefully in all town hall meetings? Well, here's the problem. They're going to they're gonna start sending infiltrators in. They already are doing it. To then, it'll work a few times, and then it blows up in your face. Uh, but we're going to get Bob Barr's take on that on the other side. Uh, but, 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 I mean, look, I went down with Jerry Patterson, the, the land commissioner, first speech politically at the Alamo since the Daughters Republic of Texas controlled it. Uh, and we marched 1,500 people with loaded guns in San Antonio because they said that was illegal, but the state law said it wasn't. And then the, their, their local law got overturned, but I did it with a, with a state leader. My dad was 59. Since I mentioned uh, Obama talking about changing the law with his executive order on immigration, I thought I would just go ahead and play the clip. Here it is. You're absolutely right that there have been significant numbers of deportations. That's true. But... What you're not paying attention to is the fact that I just took an action to change the law. Now, uh, that's enough. And he goes on from there. But getting back to the other point, under the Declaration of Independence, we do have a right to defend ourselves when tyranny becomes overwhelming. At the same time, though, we're winning the info war. A lot of bad stuff's happening. But people all over the world are waking up. We have to be very, very smart about when we do provocative things. That's all I'm saying. I'm not judging anybody. I'm just saying the system is trying to prod us into physical action. I don't know what Bob Barr's take is on this, sir. There are a lot of organizations out there. I'm involved in a law enforcement education organization, the Law Enforcement Education Foundation. We have, of course, as you've already mentioned, Liberty Guard. Citizens need to be very careful uh, how they do exercise their rights because it's, it's so easy to run afoul of some local regulation or state law uh, and you wind up uh, in jail and then you're on the defensive and have to spend a lot of money. Uh, so, for example, there was a bill passed by the Congress six, seven, well, I guess about 10 years ago now called H.R. 218, you know, the Peace Officer Safety Act that was designed to ensure that uh, that peace officers, retired, certified uh, uh, law enforcement officers could carry a firearm across state line. Well, New York and a number of other liberal jurisdictions uh, continue to uh, take action against uh, individuals who are supposed to be protected uh, under H.R. 218. They don't even want retired cops with a good record to be able to have a gun. No, I mean, these, these people are, are sick. These are officers that are post-certified, uh, police officer standards and training, they, they, and they have certification to prove it. Uh, and yet, uh, we're gonna uh, entities, governmental entities and uh, uh, states like New York take action against them. Uh, so citizens need to be very careful. There are organizations out there like a couple that I just mentioned uh, and one that you showed, the, uh, the FOP, uh, that are active out there to help police officers. So it's always wise to make sure that you understand what the laws are in your jurisdiction. They may be unconstitutional, but they can still give you a real headache before you take action. Exactly. That's why we had 1,500 of us march in San Antonio with the land commissioner, and then we did it on state land as well, and then we educated the police before we came, and it was meant to make the city council change what they were doing, not what the liberal media claimed, you know, some anti-police action. Because Soros is really trying, that's another question for you, sir, 
We've got loaded phones here, but we're almost out of time. I'll probably have to take the calls after you're gone. But uh, is there any doubt in your mind about Soros, 35 million alone in Ferguson, trying to stir up a revolution against local government so the feds and Sharpton's words can come in and federalize the police? Uh, that's exactly what we're seeing. Uh, this Department of Justice is not out there to support individual officers. They're not out there to support individual law-abiding citizens. They're using the power of the Department of Justice, the power of the federal bureaucracy, the power of the ability to use our civil rights laws against the police to come in whenever, there, whenever there's a, a perceived racial issue and make the police officer, the police department, the sheriff's office, uh, the bad guy, not sure. the citizens who are stirring things up. Sir, if you've got to go, I understand this is a 70-second break, only a five-minute segment. If we could, I'd like to come back and ask you one more question uh, about uh, jihadis or maybe come back another time. Can you say five more minutes? Uh, I, I can today, Alex, but I'll definitely uh, make myself available. Right, in 30 seconds, here. how do you think Obama thinks he can bring in jihadis, have them attack and then not get in trouble? Uh, because he controls the levers of power. Uh, these people, like the ones out in San Bernardino, the ones that were arrested in Texas and California just uh, a week or 10 days ago, uh, this administration does not care about protecting the Americans. It's the arrogance. All right, Bob Barr, thank you so much, sir. We'll talk to you again soon. I got my question in. I got it all done. Thank you.